And uh, now finally, we get to kind of um, to learn something interesting about probability that where measure theory can tell us something interesting uh, that we were we would not be able to do otherwise, let me say so. <clears throat> so um, this part uh, is called uh, borel Cantelli lemmas. These are really commonly used nowadays to prove different types of things, really like a standard technique in stochastics. <clears throat> Let's maybe introduce a little bit uh, the context. So <clears throat> we are looking at um, we are looking at the sequence of events. So consider um, some events um, e1, e2. E3, an infinite list of events. And uh, we assume that um, we could, we usually assume that we are looking at events which get rarer and rarer. So we assume that um, the probability of the nth event is going to go to zero. For example, you could think that um, these events would be, for example, that E1 would be the event that there's a new re world record in, in let's say, skiing, for example, or some sports. E2 would be the event that there's a skiing world record uh, in the next year, and uh, E3 in the third year, so kind of making a world record in across the years, so then we know that, okay, it becomes harder and harder to make a world record after n years that the competition has been running. And so in that sense, intuitively, these probabilities would go to zero of the probability of making a record. Or you could think of climate change <clears throat> and thinking, okay, what would be the probability that um, next year we make a world record in the average temperature in the world? If we assume that the average temperatures, if the climate would be stable over time, so then the probability of making a new climate record uh, after 10 years would be harder and it would get harder and harder as time goes on, yeah? So this type of setting would be the case that, okay, probability of the nth event uh, would get smaller and smaller. Then uh, in this setting, we could ask, what is the probability of um, of uh, let's say the events uh, en occurring infinitely often And we could ask, especially we could ask, is it zero? <clears throat> and the key thing here is this notion. So <clears throat> we could ask in the long run, would it be possible that uh, let's say climate records, they would occur infinitely often over time in a stable climate? Would that be possible at all, or would it be possible? We know that record making becomes harder and harder, but um, but could it still be possible that these uh, records keep on occurring infinitely often? And that's a question where probability theory can help. But now we need to understand what does infinitely often mean in the sense of measure theory and sigma algebras that we have learned. So can we represent this infinitely often as some kind of a set, as some kind of, is, it, is this a well-defined event? And to understand this, so what would it mean actually? It would mean that uh, for every, every M, let's say how big, a, 
how big M ever you might want to choose, there exists some N which is still bigger, such that um, such that this event EN occurs. This is the logic. So pick arbitrary large M thinking about like a really long time horizon. So then still, no matter how far you look in time, what is your threshold M, there still exists some N which is still further over time that this EN event occurs. That's the logic. So what is this as a, as a set? Can you write this down as a set? And if you think, okay, there are these words, every and exists. So what if I write you this set that I write every, so I write the intersection for every M bigger than one, there exists, then I write union and N bigger than M. And then I write there EN. And I define this event uh, to be E. What do you think about this? Um, what do you think about this event here? Think about picking an omega which belongs to E. Then you are picking an omega such that for every M there still exists N such that this omega is, is, is in one E M. That's what it means that EN occurs. So actually, this is the right event that we need to look. And this is actually commonly called EN infinitely often, IO. It's not the proper mathematical notation, but it's used quite often. But something infinitely often means this set. It's the intersections of these unions. <clears throat> is, this in, is this a measurable event? So is this a measurable set? What do you think? We assume that these EN, these are events. So well, if I say they are events, so then it means that they belong to the sigma algebra F that we think that it's the fundamental sigma algebra for every N. So that means that um, here we have a something which belongs to F for every N. So then we know that sigma algebra is stable under countable unions. This is a countable union because n goes from m to infinity. So here we are looking at the countable union of measurable sets. So this is a measurable things. Yeah, it's a countably infinite union. This is now a countably infinite intersection of something which is measurable. So this is also a measurable thing because we remember that sigma algebras are stable under countably infinite intersections as well. And that's why we are confirmed that E belongs to F and hence it makes sense to ask what's the probability of E. So now we are actually asking is the probability of E equal to zero? What would you guess if these individual probabilities, if they go to zero, so should it then be true that this probability of E is zero. It might sound plausible, yeah. The truth is actually quite interesting and, and sensitive. So <clears throat> this question, the answer is known. So let, let's write this answer. And this is called um, borel cantelli lem one so let's say borel cantelli lemma one there are two borel cantelli lemmas this is a uh, five point uh, what is it in lecture notes 5.7 i think so 
<coughs> what does it say? It says that if it says that if this if these uh, probabilities of these events get uh, zero fast, then be the probability of the infinitely often is zero. So, it, and what does it mean to go to zero fast? Let me write this way: If p n, the probability of e n goes to zero so fast that the sum of these probabilities is finite, then the probability that e n would occur infinitely often. Um, is zero. And um, let's do a proof. We know how to work this proof now. Actually, we have everything that we need. So for the proof, uh, let's say, let's define GM to be the event that, um, let's give this a name. So let's call this one GM. Let's call this one GM, okay. Then we can save a bit of ink here. And we look at, okay, what do we know about this event GM? So look when M, the index M grows, so then these sets get smaller and smaller. So we know that uh, G1, we know that G1 is uh, some set, but G2 is a smaller set, and uh, this set gets smaller and smaller over um, uh, when M goes to infinity. And, and we know actually that um, in the limit, there's uh, the intersection from the smallest set there is the intersection of GM. And this is the event E. So in briefly, we could write that GM is actually a decreasing set of events, which is decreasing to the smallest set when you decrease infinitely long. So the infinite limit is the, the event E that we are studying. <clears throat> and then we know that monotone limits, or let's say monotone continuity, Monotone continuity of P, we know that P is a probability measure and we learn that every probability measure is continuous in a monotone sense. So these type of monotone limits are continuous. So monotone continuity of the probability P implies that um, the probability of E is equal to the limit when M goes to infinity of this uh, GM. And what do we know about the probability of EM? We know that, the, uh, sorry, probability of GM. So probability of GM is the probability of a union N bigger than M of EN. And we know uh, now by the union bound, which is also true for every probability measure. So a countable uh, union, then the probability is less than the sum of these things. So, so we, used, we use the union bound to uh, conclude that this is less than uh, the sum uh, of probabilities of E n. Okay. Now we know that um, <clears throat> this uh, full sum is, uh, it's a we have a finite sum here. So this thing sums to some finite number. And we know that um, <clears throat> now we want to let M go to infinity. So we conclude actually that um, the limit of uh, probability of GM is less than the limit when M goes to infinity, M goes to infinity, M goes to infinity here of this sum. 
So now we are looking at the, a finite sum, but we sum on, only the tail, and then we let the tail uh, index go to infinity, so then this limit is zero. And that's why um, we know that the probability of E is zero. That's the end of the proof of the so-called first borel cantelli lemma. Do you have questions about this lemma or this proof? Maybe you, there was something that was um, I forgot to mention or emphasize. Please ask. Okay, no questions. Let's recap. The first borel gantelis lemma says that um, it says that if this if these probabilities vanish fast, so then then uh, the infinitely often uh, occurrence cannot happen. 